Based on a true story a young woman uses her intellect to stay alive and escape her armed captor at her friend's house. Kara Robinson wakes up to the sound of birdsong moments later, her friend Jess wakes up too. Kara later calls her mom Deborah Johnson to inform her of tonight's lake house party, she also reminds her that she'll be visiting her dad earlier than usual this weekend, something Deborah is reluctant to do. Here Jazz then asks Kara to water the plants while she gets ready, unaware of a black muscle car that passes by while Kara is outside. The same car pulls up, and Richard Evonitz approaches her. He distracts her by pretending to be a magazine salesman before pulling out a gun and petrifying Kara. He commands her to keep silent and climb into a large storage bin in the back seat of his car as they drive away. Kara fights off a panic attack. Soon, Jess will be ready to leave, but she can't find Kara. She heads out and finds the garden hose discarded, so she yells out for her friend. In the meantime, the car stops at a deserted area, and Richard informs Kara that she'll be gagged and restrained, emphasizing that he's armed. Kara acknowledges, and he goes to fetch the restraints. Kara's heart is pounding. As she searches for an escape route, she imagines making a run for it but fears getting shot, so she decides to wait. Richard returns and binds her before closing the container and continuing the journey. Meanwhile, Jess calls Deborah's office, hoping that she picked up Kara unannounced. Deborah denies this and becomes worried about her daughter's sudden disappearance. She calls Kara's boyfriend, Ryan, and asks if they are together. He responds that she should be with Jess, but Deborah replies that she is not there. With that, the mother calls the police before going to Jess's house. The abductor's car comes to a halt, and the man brings the container inside a house. He warns Kara to remain quiet as he removes her restraints. Kara is escorted to a bedroom, where the man reminds her that he's always armed. Richard also instructs her to obey his commands and to always ask for his permission. He warns that breaking the rules will have severe consequences. The abductor interrogates her about her life and writes the answers in a notebook. He then orders her to lie on the bed and stay quiet as he takes her innocence. Kara can only remind herself to follow the rules, wait, and survive elsewhere. Deborah calls her ex-husband Ron to ensure that Kara isn't with him, which he confirms. Deborah then tearfully informs Ron that their daughter might have been abducted so he rushes over a police officer arrives outside Jess's house so Deborah reports that Kara has been missing for two hours however the officer is convinced that Kara just ran away. She strongly denies this, citing how her daughter is responsible, before leaving the officer advises her to wait in case Kara calls at Richard's house. Kara focuses on gathering information while waiting for a chance to escape. She engages Richard in small talk and learns that he used to be in the Navy. The abductor reassures her and even promises to let her go. The man cares her before walking away. Later Richard lets Kara look at his pets, noting that he likes animals because they're simple and don't mind being caged. Sounding apologetic, he reminds Kara that he'll release her eventually but warns that her reputation will be ruined if she reports him to her house. Deborah is distraught. Jess's neighbor reported seeing a suspicious black muscle car before Kara disappeared, reinforcing her suspicions. She's now organizing a search party and reaching out to anyone she can. At Richard's house, Kara requests to use the bathroom, wondering if she can escape from there as she is about to close the door. However, Richard appears with his gun and watches her. When she tries to wash her hands, he reminds her that she hasn't asked for permission. Kara then asks for permission while the man leads at her later. Richard prepares dinner, though Kara says she doesn't feel like eating. Her abductor reminds her of the rules, so she relents. She even offers to help, so Richard asks her to sweep the kitchen floor as she does so. Hera surveys the area, memorizing the names and numbers of calling cards on the fridge where the knives are kept and the notes on his calendar while watching his obedient guest. Richard suddenly orders her to remove her clothes at the police station. Sheriff Dale Stevens isn't taking his disappearance seriously. He promises that his best people will work on the case before politely dismissing Deborah and telling her to go home in case Kara calls. Meanwhile, Richard goes to watch the news, and while Kara is visibly upset about what transpired earlier when the news doesn't mention her, he gaslights her into believing that nobody cares that she's gone. She's then led to the bedroom and told to climb inside the storage bin because he'll call someone. He gags her and closes the lid, causing her to hyperventilate. He gets angry at the noise but shows compassion by removing the gag and not closing the container. Kara silently cries, repeating to herself that she must survive later. Richard covers the cages and whispers goodnight to his pets. He then takes a large box under the cages, but he sees and hears Hera watching him. He suddenly hides it as her captor is brushing his teeth. She considers closing the door and escaping through the window when he leaves, but knows she'll just get caught before sleeping. Richard chains Kara to the bed and whispers that he's excited for tomorrow. In the morning, Kara wakes up to Richard's snores and quickly decides that this is her best chance. She works to unchain herself, then tiptoes out of the room with only escape in mind. She bolts out the front door and flags down a car with two men. 
Hurley explained that she was abducted when she pleaded to be taken to a police station, they let her in as they drove off, and as she pointed to an apartment unit, she asked them to remember it having escaped. Kara enters the police station to seek justice, she approaches the front desk and reports her abduction. Lieutenant Aaron Rowland takes Kara to his office for a detailed statement while calling for another inspector to retrieve the missing person's report and join them, he also orders her rescuers to be interviewed. Sergeant Bonnie Jennings interviews Kara's rescuers, but they don't remember the exact apartment where she came from as things happened too fast. Hera recounts the events of her escape as Bonnie enters the room to hand over the missing person's report that Deborah filled out. Deborah soon receives a call from Aaron and learns that her daughter has been found. He hands the phone to Kara to let the two have a tearful exchange. Bonnie then asks if Kara can identify the apartment where she was held since her rescuers couldn't remember which unit it was. Kara is reluctant, but Aaron requests for her to try. Her desire for justice allows her to gather the courage to return to Richard's apartment. They arrive at the apartment complex, but the units look identical. The officers see a maintenance man and describe Kara's attacker to him. Kara joins them and starts giving additional details as she enumerates her abductor's pets. The maintenance man deduces that the apartment number is 301. Bonnie is shown the unit while Aaron escorts Kara back to the car, commanding her sharp memory. Deborah arrives at the police station just as Kara returns from the apartment complex, and they share a tearful reunion later at Unit 301 after getting no answer from inside. Bonnie uses the maintenance man's key to open the door, and Aaron and Sheriff Jim Price sweep the unit but find no one there. Kara and her mom are at a hospital when Bonnie arrives with a set of pictures. Kara identifies Richard, who is then confirmed to be leasing apartment 301, however, he has already escaped, though Bonnie reassures them that he'll soon be apprehended. Bonnie asks Kara for any additional information that could aid in locating Richard, so she begins to recite all the information she has gathered about him. She also points out the large box under the bird cages. Bonnie then informs Kara that she'll undergo a physical examination for evidence collection at the crime scene. Aaron reports that they couldn't find the registration for a black muscle car under Richard's name. Kara mentioned that inside the box they discovered evidence of Richard's past crimes, including newspaper clippings and a notebook. Jim orders the officers to gather information about the cases referenced in the clippings, while Aaron is tasked with analyzing the notebook's content soon. Jim reveals to Dale that the news clippings were regarding the cold cases of Sophia Sylvia and the List sisters, who were also abduction victims. Richard's modus operandi was to keep his victims for days before drowning them and dumping their bodies in a swamp. The notebook contained potential targets and their routines, but Kara wasn't included. Jim supposes that the actual target deviated from her routine on the day of Kara's abduction, so Richard was forced to take someone else. Bonnie arrives and informs both sheriffs that Richard's wife, mother, and sister have agreed to cooperate tomorrow, and the mother has also permitted them to search her house after finishing her examination. Kara has an emotional reunion with Jess Ryan and Ron, she reassures Jess that what happened wasn't her fault after noticing people whispering about her. Kara announces her desire to go home. Bonnie and Jim are at the home of Richard's mother, assisting in the search, they find the black muscle car they believe Richard used before switching to another vehicle upon Bonnie's visit to the Johnson residence. Kara expresses her frustration over the presence of so many officers. Bonnie explains that it's for her safety and support, given that her abductor hasn't been arrested yet. Kara dislikes this but accepts it nonetheless. She goes to rest and jokingly hopes Richard gets caught while she is asleep. Bonnie responds that it will definitely happen soon, the next morning. Kara tells her mother that she plans to visit Ryan. Deborah firmly objects, insisting that she shouldn't leave until Richard is caught. Hera asserts that she won't alter her life because of her tragedy. The two argue until Jess arrives. Kara dismisses their conversation and happily invites Jess to her room. There, Kara acts as if nothing happened, making Jess unsure about how to behave. Kara encourages her friend to ask whatever she wants to know, but Jess maintains that she only wants to ensure she is all right. Kara reassures her that she's okay and insists that her friend ask what she wants. Jazz hesitantly asks what happened, and Kara starts to describe her ordeal, while Aaron questions Richard's wife Ashley at the station. She reveals that she was away over the weekend but insists that Richard would never do the things he is accused of. She claims to have no idea where he is or to have had any contact with him. Stephanie Newell Richard's sister arrives later, she greets their mother, Maggie Ivanitz, and her sister-in-law in the lobby, but Ashley gets more distressed upon seeing her. Stephanie's interrogation uncovers that Richard would drive Ashley's car with a swap license plate, and he's likely to contact them to reunite with his wife. She also suspects that this isn't Richard's first time abducting women, causing Aaron to sympathize with her. Stephanie then confesses that Richard contacted her yesterday afternoon and apologized for not admitting it sooner. 
Aaron later rushes into Jim's office and hands over information about the motel where Richard is staying, which Stephanie arranged. Jim believes that Richard is still there since it's not time for checkout, so Bonnie is immediately dispatched to the motel, while Kara sees Jess off before her friend goes. Kara asks if they will still watch Ryan's baseball game later. Jess is taken aback but says yes as Jess leaves. Dale arrives and asks how Kara is doing. He calls her a victim and insists that she stay home until Richard is caught. However, Kara responds that the police should put more effort into capturing Richard since they did nothing when she was abducted. She is surprised and offended by the lady's behavior. Dale reveals that Richard was actually planning to take her life since he has likely done this to three other women. This comes as a shock to Kara, who believed that Richard was going to release her. The sheriff adds that Kara was lucky she wasn't the next victim, but she responds that luck had nothing to do with her escape. Aaron suspects a family member warned him, though Jim is optimistic that Richard is too busy escaping to plot against Kara or another woman. The sheriff then informs Aaron that the evidence found at the apartment matches that in Sylvia's endless cases. Aaron is astonished that the cold cases might get resolved all because of Kara at the Johnson residence. Jim introduces himself to Kara as the Richland County Sheriff. She assumes that he also wants her to stay at home, where it's safe, but he responds that Kara is strong enough to defend herself, which surprises her. He offers to answer any questions, so Kara asks if Richard is responsible for what happened to Sylvia and the Link sisters. Jim says they're still waiting for evidence to confirm it, but the contents of the box that Kara pointed out suggest as much, so Kara asks if Richard would have ended her aunt's life. Jim admits that they'll never know because she didn't allow him to get that chance. Kara is taken aback by this realization, and Jim then thanks her for everything she's done, calling her a survivor and not a victim. This shift in perspective empowers Kara and helps her see things in a different light. On the way out of Kara's house, Jim receives a call from Aaron, who tells him that Richard used his cell phone 15 minutes ago in Jacksonville, Florida, and they suspect he's heading to his other sister in Bradenton. Jim advises Aaron to make sure the police there are informed after Aaron hangs up. Bonnie reports that the Avonitz family has no further information, they reach out to Richard's sister in Bradenton, Pamela, who reveals that Richard called her to meet outside his favorite restaurant. Bonnie then contacts the Bradenton Police Department to inform them that Richard may be en route at the Johnson residence. Kara locks herself into Jessica's car while Deborah pleads with her not to leave. Kara ignores this, determined to put her abduction behind her. Deborah insists that she should take some time to recover, but Kara is adamant about getting her life back to normal and refusing to let what happened to take it away from her. She apologizes to her mother, then leaves with Jess at the baseball game. Kara goes to wish Ryan good luck before she goes to her seat elsewhere. A Bradenton officer spots Richard, causing him to flee as one officer chases him on foot while his partner stays inside the vehicle and radios in their location before joining the chase by car. The officers eventually corner Richard, and he desperately looks for a way to escape. At the game, the sound of Ryan hitting a home run coincides with the sound of the gunshot as Richard takes his own life. Kara and the audience cheer on Ryan's performance just as the nightmare finally ends the following day. Kara wakes up and still feels uneasy, but puts on a smile anyway. As she starts her day, she finds her mother making pancakes, which he remarks is unusual. Deborah then tells her that Richard passed away last night, and officers are coming over shortly. Kara is furious that no one told her immediately, but Deborah counters that she didn't want to ruin their celebration about the baseball game. Kara still retreats to be alone soon. Jim arrives to see Kara sitting outside. He sits beside her and surmises that her anger is rooted in something deeper. Hera releases her pent-up anger towards Richard, confessing that her desire for justice kept her going after the abduction. She wishes she could have told Richard that abducting her was a grave mistake in a moment of clarity. Kara realizes there's no more trial, so she doesn't have to share the details of her abduction, sparing her loved ones from the painful details. Jim admires that after everything she went through, she's still thinking about protecting her loved ones. He calls her a hero, and he's certain that Richard was aware that taking Kara was his downfall. Inside the house, Bonnie advises Deborah to give Kara time to cope with her emotions. The officer leaves, and as Kara enters the room, she expresses her desire to have her freedom back as she refuses to let what happened to her shackle her. Deborah apologizes for being controlling and explains that she doesn't know what to do in this situation. Kara tells her that while her mother can't undo the tragedy, it